Hey guys, Thunder E here, and welcome to my video on the Wolverine V2 Razor Controller. Apologize for the background noise and also just a loud hum. Got a window issue here. But here's the controller, the brand new Wolverine V2. Now, this is a bit different from what you had from a standard grip Xbox controller. You can see it's a bit wider. And we'll compare that to you guys in a second, but it's got a long cable, which is bound up. I believe it's about 10 feet or so. And this gives you the ability to plug in and connect to your Xbox Series S or X. Now it connects via USB cable port, which is right here, and also has a breakout point as well. So if you need to, so you walk away or, or something like that, it basically breaks off. So you don't actually damage your console. Now, as is anything with Razer, there's a lot of detail around the controller. There's a Razer logo right there by the USB port. You can see the Razer logo etched to the front face of the controller. And you've got this nice grip feel all around the handle. So each handle you can grip. Now, we take a closer look at some of the bu buttons here. You've got, of course, your analog stick that has this nice divot for you to comfortably stay in position. The D-pad is one piece, which I'm not naturally the biggest fan, but it actually feels comfortable enough. You've got, of course, your standard Xbox buttons, your Xbox home button, share, and of course, your remap button too. At least this would be your profile button right there. X, B, Y, A buttons, quite simple. Then when we go to the shoulder and trigger buttons, uh, they are bit on the more clicky side while the triggers you can feel that right there now you've got of course your remappable button here the m1 and m2 and underneath the controller we have the locks for them so you can actually lock that in place or leave them open depending on what you want to do now speaking of controller size you can see the standard xbox controller here the grip is a bit different. So as I put my hand here, you can see how easy it is for me to move from uh, thumbstick to D-pad. Well, this is also the same, but it also feels a bit shorter. So this is a bit closer to you than the distance that feels right here. So some differences. Also, again, I think the Wolverine is a bit larger, just on the, on the wider side of things, as opposed to the Xbox controller. Okay, let's go ahead and customize the controller on the Series X. First thing you need to do is download the app, which is the Razer setup for Xbox. You go into that application and it takes you straight to your controller right here, showing you my profile, um, some of the buttons, what you can do with them. You can go into the Razer V2 itself. You can rename the controller if you like. Um, we can go into my profile here. We can edit the profile. Now we can assign buttons, first thing. So we can assign buttons to the M1 and M2, the view and menu buttons. Those are the assignments I have. I haven't changed the view and menu, but you can do different things to them if you want to. Now you can go in and change your thumbstick sensitivity. Um, the science sensitivity clutch to enable this feature. So you can do that. Okay, so that's the sign. We basically assign sensitivity clutches to the left and right thumbstick. Now we're in, we can go ahead and customize that whichever way we want. The axis, very simple, really easy stuff, whatever way you want to. It's gonna jump out of there. And then we can go ahead and customize the vibration. I have it at 10. Haptic feedback is really nice. You see the vibration zones that you have with this. So you can go ahead and change it to whatever you want to. Pretty nice altogether. Some of you are probably wondering how far the controller reaches. This is how far it does from the Series X over there on my left. You get a good idea. But if you guys have any questions or any comments about this controller, let me know. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment.